Welcome one and all to another edition of the Default Show with Luby here on the Five Reasons Sports Network brought to you by Water Cleanup of Florida. I've been talking a lot about how I've worked personally recently with Water Cleanup of Florida and they are everything they say they are. You can reach them 24-7 with six years of combined experience between Michael, Robert and their team. They not only know what they're doing, but they can actually explain it to you to where you understand. Look at that, because I am not handy at all. My wife is <laughs> sort of frustrated by that. She knew it going in, but you hope, you know, people pick things up. And yeah, I, I've done stuff with her father and my brother-in-law and friends in the past. And I'm not totally horrendous if you guide me, but I'm not one to just go and do stuff with the house. So when people are explaining things to me, it takes a, a second or two for me to understand. Not with water cleanup of Florida. They actually are so well-versed in what they're doing, so experienced, that they know how to explain it to you. So not only you understand, you're excited because you know the work is in good hands. Plus, with their licensed contractors, you know it's going to get get done to the highest of quality. Again, you can reach them 24-7. And believe me, I did. I reached out to them up early in the morning, got, reached out to them early in the morning, got a message and got a call and set up an appointment instantly they will do the same for you just call them 954-579-0356 954-579-0356 check out the website wcufl.com wcufl.com if you mention five reasons or luby you'll receive a free inspection during business hours and hit them up check them out on the socials facebook instagram twitter at water cleanup fl water cleanup of florida we clean up your schmutz it is a friday we are getting ready for the fourth of july weekend for us, it on the default show, it's a degenerate Friday. It also was a kicking at old school Friday with Tony Segreto. And yesterday was the opening of NBA Free Agency. Yesterday we spoke with Coach Ron Rossi. And today, Defo, myself, and Tony Segreto talked about a very interesting Thursday as KD wants a trade. And the Heat were mentioned. Kyrie, of course, is out there. And the Miami Heat mentioned one and only Donovan Mitchell. Supposedly they put in an official trade request for Donovan Mitchell, a lot going on in the NBA. Talked about it today on the Defo Show with Luby on the Five Reasons Sports Network. Yesterday, we had Ron Rostein talking about, uh, you know, hey, you never know what's going to happen in the NBA. <laughs> sure enough, one day later, you had 180 degree about face uh, with uh, Vaccaro now writing a scathing indictment to Kevin Durant, who demanded a trade. And it looks like the Nets are going to capitulate to uh, his desire. And of course, the number one landing destination. According to most people, I don't know if it's going to happen, uh, is the Miami Heat. And that certainly presents an interesting scenario that uh, looked like it was completely out of bounds as recently as 24 hours ago. Well, we welcome you to the show. We had to uh, juggle a few things this week uh, to accommodate this man's busy uh, business schedule and uh, travel schedule. And we have the great Tony Segreto going all school with us uh, for uh, most of this first hour of the program. Tony, how are you, my friend? I see uh, you're not exactly a front running phony here because you were a Yankee fan before this year, which is great. I was born a Yankee fan. Are you kidding me? When I was born, and I will reveal that as we speak here, I was born in 1950. Wow. Wow. And, young man. Yeah. yeah. You, you know, you look really young because you're, you're <laughs> uh, then a year older than I am. I'm going to turn 71 on Tuesday. And uh, hard to believe that you could possibly be a septuagenarian with that uh, good-looking uh, kid, young face. <laughs> well, thank you for that. But uh, I, in the the day I was born, or the week I was born, day I was born, whatever it was, was that it was the time when DiMaggio actually was offered the largest contract in baseball and turned it down and, wow. reti and retired. And retired in 1950. And being of Italian heritage and living in northern New Jersey. Uh, all Yankee fans, my entire family Yankee fans. I had a DiMaggio jersey actually put in my bassinet. Yeah. So I mean, wow. so I, from from an, an infant, it was there's no question, absolutely no question. And then you know, serendipitously, who would have ever thought I would do work with the Yankees? You know, cover them almost extensively when I first started doing baseball, and then you know, growing up with Bucky and Mickey Rivers and and all those guys and you know, and the ties just continued and Gil Patterson, dear friend, and, you know, continued to the relationship. So it's just, it's gone full circle now. So yeah, absolutely not a front runner at all, at all. Just, you know, good days, bad days and all, but I will have to say real quick, I bow to Luby. I thank you for adjusting literally on the fly. I got called to, uh, to go to Vancouver and uh, it literally a, I was in Vancouver 36 hours. So needless to say, Jeez. it's been a lot of That's travel. That's a long work. schlep uh, to go yeah. there, like a day. 
Yeah, well, you know, on the way there, I got delayed and delayed. Uh, fortunately, I made it, but but uh, leaving uh, leaving the Northeast at 5 a.m. in the morning and then not getting to Vancouver till 9 o'clock at night was a little bit of a long day. You could have gone to Rome. Out. You may as well have joined us. Amen Italian to that. Team. Amen to that. But all good, thank God, and uh, we're ready to rock and roll for sure. <laughs> all right, well, good to have you with us. Uh, you know, we had Mike Vaccaro on yesterday. It was interesting, and uh, – uh, you know, Luby has an obsession with NBA free agency. Uh, I, I don't know how overwhelmingly interesting it was. I mean, a lot of the stuff that people thought might happen did transpire. You had a bunch of guys that, you know, you talk about that largest contract for Joe D. Imagine one of the most iconic athletic names and sporting names uh, of all time, uh, of any era. And, uh, you know, I mean, as popular uh, a Yankee, uh, we, we asked for Kara if, if Aaron Judge could ever enter that level of popularity of the Yankee icons. And, you know, naturally right now, you know, he, he's riding the crest of an amazing wave, uh, leading uh, the majors in virtually every uh, category, including uh, all-star balloting and the most popular guy that you could possibly find. But uh, when you look at these salaries in the NBA, I mean, uh, uh, Nikola Jokic just signed a five-year I know, 270 crazy million dollar deal now, now it, it was always shocking when you would see some guy that you consider to be like like a you know not necessarily a scrub but just a mid-tier player and uh tyler uh who was the guy tyler johnson was that the kid's name now yes, that was with the, uh, with the heat yep. yeah yep, yep, yep. And, and he got like 50 million uh, even though he was uh you know Crazy. an average Crazy. ball player uh, at you know a few years ago from the brooklyn nets i believe signed him for that for that deal, and it was outrageous. He was a restricted free agent. And you thought, wow, they're going to pay this guy $10 million a year to well, score six points a game. But well, now, I mean, uh, how can you possibly fathom a guy? Uh, you know, uh, here's an athlete walking around. He, he's literally worth $50 million a year for, for the next five years. And, and in Jokic's case, a two-time MVP, uh, in excess of $50 million a year. And, and four or five guys got that deal yesterday. It's incredible, the money that's being uh, oh, thrown around. Uh, how about how about left-handed relievers yeah. in baseball? Same thing. I mean, these guys are pitching maybe once every three days for an inning, maybe just a batter, and they're making gazillions of dollars. It's absolutely inc incredible, and it's not not so much the NBA because it's such a pop. It's still a pop, not where it was. You know, in, in its heyday, the NBA was like you know everybody is trying to 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 mimic the NBA's PR, how they do business, right? They were all trying to do that. Um, the NBA has slipped somewhat, but still, you know, right there with football in terms of, you know, popularity, the 90s, viewership, yeah. it's, you know, right? Yeah. But they, you said about baseball, it's like, wow, you know, they struggle with viewership, they, they're struggling with attendance, and they're still offering these guys yep. an enormous, an enormous amount of money. And, you know, when you mentioned Aaron Judge, we talked about this, how he turned down that contract, and how could we, how could he do that, and, and, you know, on and on and on, and we said, you know, he's betting on himself. What will happen? Mm -hmm. Well, well, how about betting on yourself? And look, look at where <laughs> he is friend. now. Now, can he? Now, will that continue through the season? And where will that lead them into postseason? And you know, the 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 dream year, that fantasy year. You know how it ends. You know, you know how that script ends for him if that's the way it's supposed to be. Well, I think he's obviously going to make himself a nicer piece of change than uh, he had on the table before uh, by uh, taking a gamble on himself. Uh, and it was a big gamble because uh, he had uh, a long history uh, of injuries and yep, uh, yep. struggled to play full seasons, uh, as was the case uh, with the uh, departed from the Marlins, uh, Giancarlo Stanton, who, uh, you know, a a and is shining now in, in like a secondary role because uh, he doesn't have to be. Yeah. Yeah, uh, the big guy, and he's just kind of drafted in there behind Aaron Judge, which and was maybe having good a nice for him. season himself. Yeah, Seems yeah, which may be good for him. Rather, but I have to tell you this. So I want you to imagine this because this is what I thought about. Just sort of fantasize on this for just a minute. The rumor is about Kevin Durant, right? Oh yeah. Can you imagine the phone conversation? And you're not going to tell me it's not happening. The phone conversation between Durant and LeBron. Oh, I'm and sure they've Dwayne, talked. Yeah, I'm sure they've all talked. You know, can you imagine what that conversation is? What's it like to be in Miami? What's it like to be for Pat, play with Pat Riley and Spolstra? What's the what's the fan base like? What's it like to live there? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we are a star town. Make no mistake about oh, yeah. it, right? We 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 love having that those celebrities and those stars. Yep. And how well would he fit into this situation? 
um, it would be very curious to see. And and certainly this is this is, will excite the fan base as you can watch them open the newspapers this morning and see see what everybody is talking about. Wouldn't you? Well, agree? I mean, if the deal involves uh, like uh, Tyler Hero uh, a couple of years ago, people were saying uh, in his rookie season, uh, and maybe uh, you know again this year. I uh, know we should never get rid of this guy. But if you can get Kevin Durant, as you say, uh, star-driven, uh, and, and yet uh, you realize that if they, they're obviously not going to uh, trade Jimmy Butler, and, and he's going to love uh, having Kevin Durant on his team. And if you have uh, one other guy, even, even if Lowry and out of shape, uh, Kyle Lowry sticks around, you have a pretty formidable trio there oh. uh, of people. Well, they resigned all the people, I would imagine. Too. Oladipo was assumed to be Oladipo was assumed to be gone because he showed right, and he's coming around. They, they signed uh, him, they kept him, so it's like okay, that's interesting, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, I think honestly, I, I would love to see Kevin Durant come to Miami. I, I don't care. Oh, I would too. Up. Uh, <laughs> we, we know that Pat Riley doesn't really invest heavily in, in draft picks. They may get rid of this unknown guy. We were kind of teasing uh, Ron Rostein yesterday when we were talking with him. I, I think he actually got a little irritated with us because we were suggesting that this draft pick was probably as significant as uh, when they drafted. That they acquired in a, a draft day deal. And I remember, I don't know if you used to uh, do these things, uh, Tony, because you, you were probably, maybe you were, uh, you know, uh, sending somebody, uh, you know, out there to cover this stuff when you were the honcho there at, uh, you know, NBC. But uh, I used to have to go cover for uh, 940 wins and WIOD. Uh, the draft parties that the Heat would have, which uh, was kind of a misnomer because in most years uh, there was no reason to party because they, they didn't care about the draft once Riley got here. And they were drafting very highly for a few years. Oh, I but, remember those days. Yeah. So you go down to Miami Arena, you get some fan reaction, which is always a disaster. You know, I mean, you know, the usual hoopla surrounding it just to get yeah. some ambient sound from the uh, occasion there. And they, they uh, traded with Utah. The Utah Jazz uh, traded the rights to this guy, Martin Muricep. Oh, yeah. I remember Everyone that. Remembers and, that. and I'm thinking, well, what do you do with that? I mean, has anybody yeah. ever seen this guy play? And they, they literally, on, on the big screen there that they had, when they usually feature some highlights of the guy, they had an artist rendering as if they had had a courtroom <laughs> reporter draw a picture of this guy because nobody knew anything about him. And uh, I, I don't know. I guess he did step on the floor for the heat uh, for a brief period of time. But, uh, you know, this year's draft pick was in that category. And, you know, I, I would think that Riley would be in a position to offer a, a, as much as uh, the Nets uh, could possibly want and, and outbid other uh, suitors on, on a team that uh, Durant has stated uh, his preference would be uh, either to go to the Phoenix Suns or the Miami Heat. Yeah. And who wouldn't want to play down here? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And and you know that it may it may take more than just – a trade with the Nets. It may take a trade with someone else to get what you need to offer, make the offer sweeter for the Nets. So that that's those are the phone calls going on today. You know, it's so funny when I when I got to Vancouver, you know, <clears throat> I turn on the TV and what was on but draft day, <clears throat> and it you know it's a campy it's a campy movie. No uh, no excuses there, but it's fun to watch how these things work and, and the amount of effort and the amount of work and the amount of investigation that goes in to, you know, getting a player. And is that and uh, what, Kevin Costner? Yeah, the Costner. Yeah, yeah. 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 <clears throat> and what your intel is. Well, it wasn't terrible. It wasn't bad. Okay. A little predictable. No, it wasn't bad. Yeah. It gives you, it gave, you know, gave you a little bit of a, of a, of a feel. Idea, certainly yeah. not, not how it goes, but certainly a little bit of a feel in you know, Hollywood to it. But, uh, it's it's just it's it's kind of interesting. Yeah, I agree with Tony. It's very interesting what's going on in the NBA when it comes to free agency. The Miami Heat bring back Victor Oladipo, which was an interesting move. He actually looked really good in the playoffs. Defensively, he was as good as anyone they had. Offensively, he wasn't great, but he had moments. And his issue was health, right? He hasn't played for two to three years. When he's come out there last year when the Heat acquired him, it wasn't long, got hurt, missed all of the offseason, all of this year, until really right before the playoffs and the playoffs. And he was their third best defensive player. And at times he helped them offensively with a fully healthy off season. It feels like Oladipo can get the offense back. He could be an Oscar caliber player. People thought Oladipo was gone. No, the Miami Heat, with the bird rights, were able to go a little bit higher with him, kept him for one year. So you keep him. You lose P.J. Tucker to the Sixers, but the fact that he got three years – $33 million guaranteed. That la- I mean, he would, yes, he got hurt at the end, but he also was showing age. I mean, he's 37. I think you'll get another year to two years of him. That third year, he'll do nothing. So you're locking him up for a third year where he's going to be 40. 
And that's a lot for the Heat. So the fact that they were able to keep Oladipo, lose Tucker, when we've when a guy like Jay Crowder's out there that they did have success with and they should be able to make a move for him or some other guys, we've seen them do stuff with that power forward spot. Smaller, taller guys. I think Tucker was huge for the Heat this year. I would have loved to have kept him, but what he got, I mean, with the Heat embroiled in Kevin Durant rumors, and the other big news yesterday was that the Heat had a day or so offered an official trade for Donovan Mitchell. Mitchell has yet to request a trade. Utah is not the kind of team that gets rid of a guy that has like two to three years left on his deal, who's just 25 years old. But the fact that the Heat went and offered a trade is very interesting. No one else has, and it is well known that the Heat offered a trade. With all that going on, much bigger whales, as they say, out there. The Heat really couldn't get tied into all the deal. But they also kept uh, Deadman on a two-year, $9 million deal, a nice, affordable deal. A guy that actually, until the playoffs, was very useful for them. Good rebounding defense and you sort of helped out Bam. And your seven's a young kid uh, with the Magic keeping Mo Bamba, a guy that is very similar to Deadman but younger, more athletic. It... Now you keep Deb and you bring in your seven, let your seven get a little bit more minutes, but now you have th- that depth at an affordable price. The Heater, whale hunting, as they say. Kevin Durant did ask for a trade out of the Brooklyn Nets. The Miami Heat were one of the top two teams mentioned. It supposedly wants to go to Phoenix, but he would like to go to Miami as well. Big fan of Bam and really uh, close to Jimmy Butler. We'll see if any of those teams can make a move of Kevin Durant, but it does feel like the Heat are in action as they are, we talk about going into it. It's even more exciting. Going to be fun. So much more. Yes, the ACC uh, on uh, the precipice, maybe of some interesting things as USC and UCLA will officially move to the Big Ten. Oregon and Washington are requesting a move to the Big Ten. You have FSC, you have UM. We'll see with Clemson, North Carolina, VT. The ACC seems to be uh, hinging on the verge of extinction. We'll see if those powers in the ACC linger let themselves get exposed, or make a move. We'll also see what goes on this 4th of July. Everyone hopefully has a healthy, happy, safe 4th of July. Enjoy the weekend. Enjoy the buzz. And we'll talk to you next week on The Default Show with Luby here on the 5 Reasons Sports Network. Hey, folks. Tony Segreto here. Let me ask you a question. What do you look for when you go out to eat? Good food, obviously. Friendly atmosphere. Not too loud, but good energy. Reasonable prices. And a place where you feel comfortable. All those ingredients, no pun meant there, are hard to find unless you're talking about the Texas Roadhouse. You see, they encompass all of those attributes. Really, really good food. Amazing atmosphere. Good for a family. Good for a date or just a night out for yourself. And prices that will make you extremely happy. Their ribs unmatched. Steaks hand cut every day. Everything, and I mean everything, is made on site, including their incredible bread. It's the one day, folks, that you can forget about low-carb diets. Trust me when I tell you, Texas Roadhouse, your restaurant, your destination, when you say, where should we go and eat tonight? These days, we're all looking for comfort anywhere we can find it. Thank goodness for Landlubbers, Raw Bar and Grill in the plantation because they are making sure you are as comfortable as possible. First of all, they're not only open for delivery and pickup, All you have to do is go to landlubbersbarandgrill.com for both pickup and free delivery. You're going to have the best wings in the world. You're going to have a great burger. You're going to have their amazing soups. Again, Landlubbers, Raw Bar and Grill. It's nice and easy. Just go to landlubbersbarandgrill.com for both your pickup and free delivery. Thank goodness for Landlubbers for making you always feel right at home. Hey, folks, Tony Segretto here. You know, since day one, Catholic Health Services has been part of old school. And since we've started letting people know about them, it's changed their lives. You see, Catholic Health Services, while being recognized as one of the top places for stroke rehab in the country, it's also about a group of people who not just excel in what they do, from the doctors to the nurses to the therapists, on and on and on. It's how they do what they do every single day that separates them from the pack. They do it with a passion, unmatched, and the inclusion of family in every step of the process. Trust me when I tell you this. If you want the best unmatched rehab with a special group of skilled, caring people, there is truly only one place. And that one place is Catholic Health Services.